2007. We saw what we believe and have no doubt evidence and remains of Herod II. Ehud Netzer announces his team's discovery. Netzer's confidence is absolute, but without an inscription bearing Herod's name, the team's evidence for his tomb is circumstantial. Still, their argument is persuasive. First, the tomb and its three sarcophagi are royal in quality. The ornate red one is likely Herod's. Who once occupied the white sarcophagi may never be known. Second, the complex in which the tomb was found is the only one in Judea named after Herod. And we know from the historian Josephus that Herod was buried somewhere here. Third, the red sarcophagus was probably smashed on purpose, perhaps punishment for Herod, who was despised by his own subjects. New evidence from the sarcophagi and the mausoleum platform make this possibility almost irresistible. It shows the weathering of the building stones is minimal. Signs of exposure indicate that the burial monument stood for just 60 or so years. After that, it must have been destroyed and buried. The tool marks are still visible. You, you see the hammers, the chisels, everything that was used. Normally when a building stands for a long time, these tool marks will become less and less uh, visible. The fact that they are so visible gives the feeling that the building was not standing for hundreds of years, maybe 50 years, maybe 60 years, but not more. Looking at what happened about 60 years after Herod's death, the timing is almost perfect. Herodium was then occupied by Jewish rebels trying to drive Rome from Judea. And no one detested Herod's memory more. The rebels would have had the motive to destroy Herod's tomb and would likely have concentrated their anger on the sarcophagus they knew or believed was his. The red most royal one. Finally, Herod was the only Judean worthy of such a lavish burial about 60 years before the demolition of the tomb took place. For Netzer and his team, it all adds up.